Thanks for joining us, uh, Mamfe. Yeah, thank you immensely for having me. All right, very quickly, the, the Mamfe Hospital was recently burnt down and other hospitals have been similarly attacked by the separatist group. What, in your view, mm -hmm. is responsible for these strings of attacks? Actually, they have been... Of that uh, both the government, that is, uh, the uh, those in the military as well as the separatist fighters have been exchanging guns and innocent lives have been lost in that encounter. Uh, but then, as of now, the government of Cameroon too is trying as much as possible to see that this crisis actually comes to an end. Uh, though the uh, international community have requested that there be a ceasefire in both uh, English-speaking regions. As of now, as you did mention, health centers since January have been uh, being affected by these uh, by these crises. We had uh, cases recorded in the two English-speaking regions, but now uh, the government of Cameroon is, is still trying. Though several analysts here in the country are still insisting that the or both parties come to a table and uh, put the interests of uh, Cameroonians at heart, especially those in the Western regions. Uh, now, as of now, we we really can't tell because one day the government is accusing the separatist fighters, but the next day we have uh, cases of, of the soldiers being uh, accused of, of committing atrocities. And so as of now, no one is actually to blame. Both parties are to blame. All right. So, so some have accused the government and the Cameroonian army, rather, of uh, being complicit in this incident. What is your take on that? Uh, could you come again with your question? I said some have said the Cameroonian army have uh, a level of blame in some of these uh, attacks on institutions and like the hospitals. What's your take on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That is what uh, we may say the Western media has, but those from sources on ground, as of now, uh, there are reports that People say that the military could have been involved, but we really don't know yet. Uh, according to sources, it shows that uh, some non uniform men, so we don't actually know whether they were military or non-military, but as of now, we just know they were armed uh, persons that are attacking the, the health facilities there in that part of the country. So we really can't tell whether it's the government or the separatist fighters. So how are the people in the Anglophone area of, of Cameroon, that's the, the areas where they have called themselves Ambazonians, how are they adjusting to this level of violence being experienced, uh, you know, in the fighting uh, between the separatists and the government troops, the crossfire? How are they adjusting to the level of violence there, the people there? Okay. I must, I must say that before this crisis erupted, uh, the northwest and southwest regions, as we know now, the conflict hit regions of Cameroon, where there were peaceful towns where everybody wanted to actually visit because they are very much interesting places there that uh, I bet if you had come to Cameroon at that time, you might want to visit. But now, since the crisis erupted in 2016, we have had uh, businesses shut down. We have had People that have lost their lives, they have lost their family members, they have had to displace themselves for one reason or the other, their family homes burnt down and so on and so forth. So as of now, we can just say that those in this affected regions, they're just trying to adapt because like they say, home will always be home. No matter where you find yourself, in as much as the crisis is still on, we still have persons. I, for example, I originate from the northwest region of the country. And I can still go back, in as much as there's a crisis, I, I cannot run away from home, you see. So we are just trying to adapt. We are just trying to adapt. But then we are calling on the government and uh, the separatist leaders to see how they can put in place what they call the inclusive national dialogue to make sure that these crises actually come to an end. Because we can't be talking of bringing about lasting solutions when both parties, they cannot sit together we had recently the uh, ASEAN conference that took place in the southwest region. We had the Prime Minister, uh, Chief Dr. Joseph Jangute, who is uh, a son of the soil, but he was not part of that of that uh, conference. We only had uh, cases where he was uh, going to the northwest region, the southwest region. He went there heavily, heavily protected. So we asked ourselves that if we want to solve this crisis, 
both parties have to sit together to see how we can uh, put the interest of Cameroonians and especially those of the English-speaking region. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Sharon. We appreciate your contribution. Uh, Sharon Njix, a journalist uh, based in Cameroon.